Okay, a little bit more backyard and anatomy. I've been struggling to find the motivation to do this. This is my reward. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the ophthalmic arteries. So it seems remiss not to talk about the ophthalmic veins. So we'll follow the blood back in. And we've got to link up the blood, the veins of the superficial face and the deep face to the orbit and the cranial cavity. Okay, so while the ophthalmic artery was a branch of the internal carotid artery coming out of the cranial cavity and supplying blood to the structures of the orbit and then linking with some other structures out here, some other arteries. Um, the veins, of course, are going in the opposite direction because that's what veins do. The veins are draining blood from the orbit. But they, they follow a similar route but not the same route and we've got two of them. We've got a superior ophthalmic vein and an inferior ophthalmic vein. And rem remember that spelling, the OPH. Thalmic. Now if you know the veins of the face, uh, in the medial, like the medial canthus here, over here in the medial side of the eye, we've got the angular vein. Uh, and the angular vein descends kind of this way and becomes the facial vein. The facial vein is going to run around the mandible to get back down into the neck. That's a superficial vein of the face that's draining blood from the superficial face. Now up here, we've got supratrochlear and supraorbital veins. And if you re recognize those names, that's because the, the ophthalmic artery gave off supratrochlear and supraorbital arteries to this region. So the veins match at this point, kind of. So the supratrochlear vein and artery are named supratrochlear because the superior oblique muscle runs through a pulley and the word for pulley is trochlea. So that means that these veins are gonna run superior to the trochlea, the pulley of the superior oblique muscle, which is, which is up kind of deeper in there. So supratrochlea is over here, then supraorbital, this is the orbit in here. So the supraorbital vein is draining blood from the scalp up here, and it'll run through a supraorbital foramen or a supraorbital notch to get into the super superior part of the orbit. The supratrochlear and supraorbital veins come together to form the angular vein, so they're draining blood from the scalp, angular vein, facial vein, right? But the superior ophthalmic vein is also going to form from the supratrochlear, supraorbital, angular. So we often, we usually say in the simplest sense, the superior ophthalmic vein comes from the angular vein. You might hear or read about nasofrontal veins um, in between the two, but essentially the angular vein is formed from these two guys and the superior ophthalmic vein forms here and it runs whoom, deep into the orbit. And it runs with the ophthalmic artery for much of its way, but not entirely. So the superior ophthalmic vein is going to run just inferior and kind of a little bit medial to that superior oblique muscle. So if the orbit is kind of shaped, it's like that, isn't it? It, 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 it goes out in this sort of shape. The, the superior ophthalmic vein is gonna run posteriorly, but it's gonna run through the superior orbital fissure, that big fissure that we see at the back of the orbit there. And it's a big fissure because it's got a lot of structures running through it. So whereas the ophthalmic artery runs through the optic canal, that's not what happens with the veins. The superior ophthalmic vein is gonna go back through the superior orbital fissure, then it's in the cranial cavity, and it's gonna to drain to one of the dural venous sinuses. So the venous spaces made within the dura mater inside the cranial cavity. It's gonna to drain to the cavernous sinus. And the cavernous sinus is kind of wrapped on either side of the pituitary fossa. Uh, and you kind of think of it as this big venous space, but in reality, it's got so many structures running through it that it's almost like a plexus of veins surrounding those structures. So the superior ophthalmic vein drains to the cavernous sinus. As it passed, posteriorly through the orbit, it picked up veins from the extraocular muscles nearby, it picked up veins from the eyeball, it, I think it picks up the lacrimal vein, um, it picks up ethmoidal veins which are medial and that sort of thing. So as it goes it picks up veins from the structures of the orbit. Most importantly, 
uh, is the central retinal vein. So we said there was a central retinal artery, which is the main artery that supplies blood to the retina. It has a counterpart, the central retinal vein, that's going to collect blood from the retina and will probably drain to the superior ophthalmic vein. It might find its own way back to the cavernous sinus, but that's an important aspect of the superior ophthalmic vein. That's part of its function. What about the inferior ophthalmic vein? That's in the inferior orbit, makes sense, right? And in the anterior, inferior orbit down here, there are a number of veins. So remember the veins are more variable than the arteries, which is why we tend to talk about the arteries more than the veins. Um, but there are a number of veins inferiorly down here, and they come together somehow to form the inferior ophthalmic vein. So then the inferior ophthalmic vein is going to run posteriorly into the orbit, inferior to the eyeball, again picking up veins as it goes from the extraocular muscles and bits and bobs. Now interestingly, the inferior ophthalmic vein ends by running in two directions. It's going to move superiorly to join with the superior ophthalmic vein, so the inferior ophthalmic vein drains to the superior ophthalmic vein and to the cavernous sinus, but it's also going to drain, it's going to send its final branch inferiorly through the inferior orbital fissure. So the inferior orbital fissure connects the orbit with the deep face. So the inferior ophthalmic vein will also drain through the inferior orbital fissure to the veins of the pterygoid venous plexus in the deep face. So the blood from the orbit, the structures of the orbit, will drain into the cranial cavity and into the face. And that's it, that's the anatomy. Now, the reason it's, um, well, there's a couple of reasons why it's useful and interesting. Um, the main one that comes up most often is that the ophthalmic veins are links between the superficial veins of the face and the venous sinuses inside the cranial cavity and they don't have any valves, which means that um, blood could flow in either direction depending upon the pressure gradient, so it can, it can change depending on what's going on. Um, but it means that infections from the skin of the face, this gets called the, the danger triangle, the skin, here, the skin of the face around here, it means that blood from the face, the superficial face, can drain to the cranial cavity. So this is a potential route of infection passing from the skin of the face into the orbit and into the cranial cavity and if infection gets inside the cranial cavity that's obviously a lot more serious than an infection in the skin of the face. The other one is that the superior ophthalmic vein is kind of the main one that people talk about the most and if blood flow is restricted through these veins for any reason then like veins tend to do they will dilate and become tortuous, more wiggly and what have you. Um, the central retinal vein can get occluded, or I think this, I think this is very rare though, and that will affect uh, vision, that will affect function of the retina and pressure within the eye. Um, but that superior ophthalmic vein changes to it can be seen radiologically with pathology to the eye that's restricting blood flow through the veins. But that's it, superior ophthalmic vein, inferior ophthalmic vein, we've matched what the arteries do and it's more of a complete picture. All the anatomy in the eye tends to be important, so if it's simple, that's just good, right? Alright, see you next time.